Welcome to the Real Estate Investor Costas Podcast. I'm your host, Monique Hom. On this show, I interview incredible women that talk about real estate investing, business strategy, and and how to um, and how to and how they have achieved incredible success. And I'm a Super excited today to have with me Sharon Waller, who is a passionate expert on entrepreneurial teams. So she also has some real estate, but I'm having I'm I brought her here to really talk about the best advice and strategies that she knows for successfully creating a business. Real estate investing is a business and even though if it's a side business for a lot of people it is a business and the better that we can do that the more success we have so CNN has been with Strategic Coach since 1991. She's the creator of the Entrepreneurial Team Program, a parallel program for team members of coach clients that focus on fostering a winning entrepreneurial attitude in its participants. A key decision maker at Strategic Coach and a recognized entrepreneurial team expert, Shannon is a sought after speaker, presenter, and coach. She's a Colby certified consultant and the 2015 recipient of the Colby Professional Award for Individual Leadership in Building co-native excellence. Um, she's also, also co-authored uh, the best-selling book, Unique Ability 2.0, Discovery. It's author of the Team Success Handbook and most recently wrote Multiplication by Subtraction. I was super excited to meet her at the InvestorCon conference in Charlotte in June, and I'm thrilled to have her with me. Welcome, Shannon. Monique, I am so excited to be here and to see you again. You were one of the people that really influenced me at, at InvestorCon, so it is a real pleasure to connect again. Likewise. Before we got ro rolling, we were talking about books that we exchange, you know, book recommendations we exchanged at the conference that have changed our lives. So in the in the spirit of sharing the good stuff, I'm going to say that she handed out this book, The Gap and the Gain, written um, by, uh, now I, ha I just had a brain fart. Um, yeah. The Gap and the Gain is written by Dan Sullivan and Benjamin Hardy. So Dan yes. Sullivan is co-founder of Strategic Coach with Bab Smith, his wife and business partner. Um, and she's really the person who runs Strategic Coach, in case anyone's wondering. And then Benjamin Hardy is, Dr. Benjamin Hardy is a fabulous author who can take our ideas and does a brilliant job of multiplying them into much bigger books than what we would create. So those are the authors of uh, of Who Not How and The Gap and the Gain. Totally changed, uh, it was completely life-changing for me getting that, that book. Um, and then I referred to her, the book Unbound by Kasha Urbaniak and, um, and that was wonderful for her. So uh, well, I won't go into the books because we have so much else to talk about during this interview. But for those of you who are bibliophiles like me, who are always writing down book recommendations and reading great books, those two books, I highly recommend. So um, Shannon, I know you have some real estate and the way, you know, this is a podcast where we interview women real estate investors. We're not going to focus too much about that, but you do have some real estate investments and you were sharing with me before we got rolling a big recent real estate win. Do you want to, why don't you just share a little bit about your background with real estate investing and, um, and then brag about your win. <laughs> oh, thank you. Yeah. And our real estate pretty much is, is kind of what we personally enjoy. So, and I knew I'd come back from the conference going, Hmm, I think I need to become a real estate investor. <laughs> Uh, but my husband and I have bought, we have on a house, we own a vacation property, which in Canada we call a cottage because I'm based in Toronto, Canada, uh, which is a cabin by a lake in case it, that doesn't translate. Uh, so that's what that is. And I was, I was trying to calculate the value of, of what's happened since we bought it. And I think the initial value was around 700,000 and now it's closer to 3.2, 3.5 million, which is like, it's, it's fun to look back and go, that's progress. <laughs> which is really fun. And then most recently, and this is a bit of a sad situation, my, my stepmom passed away. So my dad passed away about eight and a half, nine years ago, eight and a half, I guess. And then my stepmom unfortunately passed away very suddenly, like a month from diagnosis to passing away. Um, but she had a condo that was mid construction, not a good time to pass away. Note to self, don't do that. Uh, anyway, and it had been horribly delayed COVID, all the things. Anyway, we finally closed on it and, and my husband and I are the executors of it. So on the very first day that it was listed, 
um, our real, fabulous real estate agent got a bunch of offers. The first person who came in made a preemptive slash bully offer for $250,000 over asking, nice. which of course we accepted. <laughs> um, so, and it was in anyone's interest in Toronto real estate prices, condo at Queen of Woodbine, which is in the, what's called the beaches area, it's nice, 932 square feet. Uh, and it was listed for 950, which wasn't a huge jump from what she paid for it four years ago. So we weren't really making a lot, but the uh, it sold for 1.2. Nice. So we were like, I think we have to take the offer. <laughs> <laughs> it's actually my responsibility to, to the beneficiaries to do that. Uh, so anyway, that was my latest real estate transaction. And we just felt so fortunate because it turned out we hit the right 50. 15 minutes of the top of the market yeah just after that it started to go down or flatten out uh so yeah i feel very very fortunate about that congratulations that's amazing um yeah i love i love real estate so for for all of those all those reasons for those big sales for the you know the cash flow i, I could go on and on but i want to i want to ask you some questions about advice. I've been doing a series of interviews about advice. And I'm going to ask you, what's the best life advice you've ever received? Oh, interesting. I received a lot of really good life advice. Um, I, I, I can tell you to what it distills down to, um, if that makes sense. So here's what I've internalized. And I kind of have one rule or one principle by which I live, um, which has been proved to be incredibly useful. And I'm someone who was raised by kind of cool hippie parents, didn't have a whole lot of boundaries, had to figure out my own. So now, which meant means now that as an adult, I have a lot of bandwidth. I, I have ex been exposed to tons of different types of people and experiences. Growing up, it was a little more challenging. Uh, but the one rule that I have, it's life advice I've gleaned, let me put it that way, is that I trust people to the, to the degree that I think they know themselves. Mm. And so what that means is if someone says, I'm, I'm not trustworthy, I believe them. I don't try and argue them out of that. If someone says, oh, I'm not sure what, I'm, what I would do, I'm like, then neither do I. Mm -hmm. And because they haven't had that experience. And, I, and a lot of people, we kind of blow those off. Oh, sure, you're trustworthy. Oh, you know, sure, you do the right thing. Mm -hmm. Who knows? So that means that for me, one of the most important things for me and anyone that is in my sphere is I'm like, know thyself. That is my byline. I want it to be other people's. I've got awesome tools to help people do that. But the importance of actually just knowing yourself at a deep level, and it's kind of interesting when we're we're born as children, we go through life, but we actually, we don't get, an, not only do parents not get an operating manual, we don't get our own operating manual. <laughs> you kind of have Correct. to figure out who you are, where can you contribute, where are you not as useful, um, what's important to you, what's not important to you. We all give meaning to very different things and, and we're very individual in that. So the more you can explore yourself means that you become more predictable, more trustworthy, more capable, more knowing where to place yourself to make a contribution, what things to stay out of so you don't make a mess, um, which I have found personally very helpful because made a few messes earlier <laughs> in my life. Nothing disastrous, but you know, when you just keep doing stuff and you're like, that's not working, that's not working, that's what What can I do that will work, right? And so when I finally found strategic coach and sales and presenting and coaching, finally I was like, whew, this is what I'm meant to do, not all the 18 million other things that I tried. Uh, yeah. So know thyself and I trust people to the degree that they know themselves has proved to be some really great life advice for me. And how do you, that's so good. Um... Trust people to the degree they know themselves. How do you assess how well they know themselves? And I know sometimes they might say, um, you know, I'm not sure. Or, But it's like, do people often say I'm not trustworthy? I think they might say it in, they might show you. <laughs> like, how do you, how do you yeah. determine? I have had some people, I actually surprisingly, it's often in relationships <laughs> that people, and it's weird. People are weirdly honest. We just don't take it seriously is what I've discovered. Uh, and, and some people are out to confuse you and manipulate you and you know they're, they're designed with their agenda. That, that actually turns out to be a very small percentage of the population. I think people give us enormous clues about who they are. We just don't wanna listen. 
we don't want to pay attention to those. Uh, so you, I just ask a question, oh, what do you think you do in that situation? Or have you experienced this before? What have you done? You know, how, what's your response? And they'll tell you. Yeah. Mostly because it's kind of hard to make up a lie with those things. And, and, and often, like I know, I can want, let me just give you a really simple, simple example. I can want to be really organized. Do I have the brain power to do that? Yes. Am I? No. In fact, if you could see behind me, you'd be like, oh, yeah, you're really not organized, right? Now, I look organized because I follow a calendar and I have a great system and I have a who, Katrina, who is a, my brilliant support partner. She organizes my whole life, all of my activities. I look organized and I am, but, but I didn't have anything to do with it, right. right? Like I gave direction. So I know that left to my own devices without support or help, I'm... I'm way too distractible, bright, shiny object syndrome, all those things. Uh, but I know myself and I have and I have zero expectation or desire to be any different than who I am right now. Right. Like, I do I want to grow and expand? Absolutely. But do I make any part of me wrong? Nope. And I don't think other people need to either. Yeah. A fun, a fun example about that is I was talking to someone yesterday. She goes, oh, my gosh, I, I procrastinate. Like, I, I know I and I was like, really? Okay, can, and the way I looked at some of her profile information, like, okay, tell me a couple, some examples. And it turns out she doesn't procrastinate at all. She just, she just has a different time frame for getting things done than the person who was judging her, right? And so, I don't she know. She's judging whole, herself. Yeah, based on other people's input. And I'm like, oh, when you started to study for that exam was way sooner than I would have. <laughs> <laughs> like, I don't call that procrastination. She goes, yeah, if I do it too much earlier, I forget. And I don't have the retention. I'm like, then you're doing exactly the right way for you. Not who, the, not how this other person told you. So, so I just had to reaffirm her own sense of herself, and she knows what works. And that turns out she wasn't a procrastinator at all. <laughs> so anyway, just that's the kind of fun conversations and coaching that's just so joyful because yeah. then people go, oh, this is how I'm constructed. This is where I have strengths. This is where my non-strengths, I need to get support in these areas. And that's all good. We're not all supposed to be one cookie cutter version of, of one another. That's boring and not true. We all have our zones of genius. Exactly. Yeah. So what's the best financial advice you've ever gotten? Oh, that's easy. Um, it comes from the, what's the name of the book? Oh, Richest Man in Babylon. Mm. Pay yourself first. Yeah. Pay yourself first. And then the exponential nature of money. Yeah. So that, that whole, I can't tell the story well enough, but you know, someone, at, someone that the, served the king or the emperor asked to be paid the following way. I see that I want to, took a chessboard. I want a grain of rice on one square. Then I want double that, those grains in the next square and the next square and the next stair. By the time you get to 64 squares on the chessboard or however many there are, yeah. Um, yeah. it's like this incredible amount of rice. Zamper <laughs> <laughs> yeah. well, didn't want to pay that, so we killed him. But anyway, yeah. um, <laughs> exponential nature, um, which is really not, yeah. Yeah, not easy for our brains to, we're, our brains are linear by nature. We take 100 steps, we've gone 100 steps. You know, 100, you know, exponential looks very different. Uh, so that compounding nature and pay yourself first, that is by far the best advice that I've had. So, so yeah. trying to pass that on to my children. <laughs> Some with one is easy, the other one not so much. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So what's the worst advice you could give someone? <sighs> trying to be somebody else. What's, what, the quote is, someone gave it to me yesterday or the other day again. Um, be yourself, everyone else is taken. Everyone else already taken. Yeah. yeah. Well, the other the other one that's kind of fun is by the brilliant Saturday Night Live comedian, um, the woman who played uh, Rosanna Rosanna Dana. She goes, you know, I always said I wanted to be somebody. I realized I should have been more specific. <laughs> 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 but if you can be yourself, you know, everyone else yeah. is taken. So I think advice the that anything, is like try to be somebody else. Yeah. yeah, you have to do this to be successful. You have to do that. You have to uh, contort yourself. No. And Kathy Colby, one of my people that I admire and, and creator of the, what's called the Colby Profile. It's K-O-L-B-E, not C-O-L-B-Y. Um, she goes, uh, freedom is actually the success to be yourself. No, success is the freedom to be yourself. 
So I think truly successful people and the people we admire, the people in the news that we look up to, the ones that have pulled off some pretty amazing feats, they have taken that freedom to be themselves. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I love that. Um, and who do you turn to for advice? So many people. <laughs> Uh, that's a really great question. Who do I turn to, adv to advice? I've got, um, oh my God, I guess I would say my best friends. So, and my best friends are people like my husband, my friend, Joan, who's my friend at the cottage. I've got it. I've later in life, I've developed a, a bunch of women friends. When I was growing up, most of my friends were men, but now they're, they're women. And I'm just like, oh. I have women friends now. And so we go, we go walking when we're up on vacation together and I will ask them business related questions. Um, I really look for the concept in strategic coach is called unique ability. And so where people have a passion, like superior skill and passion, they love doing it. They have insights into, into things that other people don't and that I don't. Mm. So I look for, you know, someone who's really, really good and not just their own ego saying that. Yeah. <laughs> Other yeah. people say you're really good and their eyes light up when they talk about it and they have a passion. That's who I want to ask for advice. So I could, I mean, so many names are going through my head right now. My, my friend, Kim White, who's like an energy guy. Um, Deirdre Van Nest, who's my speaking coach, who, who really coached me brilliantly crazy good talks. Anyone want to know, uh, brilliantly on how to be an even better speaker. Uh, she's someone I go to for advice about that. So kind of, it depends is the answer. Yeah. But people like people I trust people who have a unique ability and people I know who have my back. That's who I go. That's the type of people I go to for advice. Trust unique ability and they have your back. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I love that. That's so good. Um, So what advice do you have for a woman who's, you know, starting out in real estate investing? Yep. Now, what would you, what advice would you give her? Oh, first of all, congratulations. <laughs> super smart, super cool thing to be doing. Yay. The fact that you are getting started is huge. Even having the desire and putting yourself in a learning place like this, where you're supporting your desires, high five. Like that's awesome. Celebrate your, celebrate that. It's very, so I want to talk about the gap in the gain, Monique, because this is something yeah, let's talk that, about that really impacted you. And I think if there's anything that holds people back, and I am going to say women a little bit more, and, <laughs> and Dressa at the conference was saying this, she goes, you know, you know, I talked to men and they're like, oh yeah, I'm crushing it. I'm like, great. How many, how many buildings do you have? They're like, oh yeah, I'm just done one and I'm working on my second. You ask a woman how she's doing, real estate investor. She's like, oh yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm doing okay. Kind of working my way. How many buildings do you have? 16. <laughs> <laughs> now, I'm, so not trying, I'm not trying to slam the guy, but we're way too humble. <laughs> right? Yeah, that's no. that's why I'm so, I get my goddesses to brag. Yeah, we right? always brag. And you're going to be doing a brag soon. But yeah, yeah it's just I like, we've got to celebrate what our yeah, wins. So recognize yeah. progress. This is where we could take a page out of that book, is if you think of every single little step, every little thing, thing that you learn, every other new capability you put in place, everything, every book you read, every podcast you listen to is like you're, st you're stocking up capabilities and capabilities include people. So if you can find people who are great to collaborate with to, for, to help you accomplish your goals, those are wins, you know, yeah. and we think of it as bragging, but really it's, it's celebrating. It's like, okay, I'm further ahead today than I was yesterday. That's progress versus, and this is why women tend to go into what we call the gap. The gap is measuring where we are now against our ideal. Now, ideals are fabulous. They inspire us, they get us out of bed in the morning, they keep us on track when we might rather be doing something else or someone tries to dissuade us. We're like, no, I have this ideal. Now, the challenge with ideals is that as you move towards them, they move too. And there's a little demonstration I give on stage where, you know, you're here, and you're looking ahead, you're like, okay, that's where I am. And you're like, and then you, and then it's like the horizon, you know, you, you, you run real fast, and you look up, and you're like, oh, I'm still not there. Or it's like the and carrot you, in front, you know, yeah. dangling off of the, the donkey and the in carrot. Front of the donkey with the carrot, and you're like, I'm going to get to that carrot. <laughs> I never knew, but it keeps you going, right? But what, as you do that, as you keep putting the time and the effort and the struggle in, 
it, it, the ideals are hard. You get close to it and they move further ahead. So you can't get to the horizon. Even if you run real fast, even if it's dark outside, you'll never get there because it's a mental construct. We made it up. We made up this ideal. Now, use it to inspire yourself to set goals and hit the goals. But trust me, it's, it's like it's like health or weight loss. As soon as you get close to that, you're like, oh, okay, I'm going to be thrilled with my body when? And then you list all these things. And then you get close to that and that becomes true. And then you're like, I thought that was it. It's not really it. This has to be true now. This is what happened. That's an ideal. We have ideals about our kids, our spouses, our days, our, our face, our body, our clothes. You name it, we got ideals about everything. That's natural and normal. Just don't measure yourself against it. Instead, turn around and look back to where you came from. And then you're like, whoa, look at all the progress. The interesting yeah. thing is you're in the same place. All that has changed is the direction that you're looking and how you're measuring yourself. So when you measure yourself against the ideal, you fall into what we call the gap. And it's permanent. The permanent gap between where you are now and your ideal. Instead, if you turn around, look where you came from, progress, bam, and that's for celebrating. So yeah, yeah, please, yeah. please, please measure your progress, not against where you started, not from your ideal. If you can do that, you will make it, and here's why. There's an effect on your nervous system and there's an effect on your emotional system. When you are measuring yourself against the gap, there's a constant sense of failure, pessimism, negativity, discouragement, insecurity, all the things. Yeah. Right. You're never going to get to that horizon. No. You're like I've been running forever and I'm never going to reach it. <laughs> like oh. it's frustrating. It's too, long, too long. People get depressed. Yeah. Right? And you read yeah. the news. You're like, oh yeah. You're anxious oh. and they're, yeah, it's like, it's the carrots is never going to get there. Um, but yeah, but looking yeah. back, you're right. And then and you have a sense of success, optimism, positivity. You're looking forward. You're open. You're communicating. You're collaborative. It's like, oh my gosh, look what I already did. What's next? And people think that unless they're kind of beating themselves up, they're not going to strive. Uh -uh. It's because we don't actually fuel ourselves with the wins. Go, oh my gosh, look how far do I, by the way, if you're winning, do you want to stop? Most people do not. You're much more likely to stop because you're measuring yourself because you're, you're in the gap than because you're putting yourself in the gain. So yeah, that's my, that's my speech for today. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. Well, it did, I guess I, I was saying before we recorded that did, it was life changing for me. And I'd started this year and, um, and that was a lot of good, but I really, you know, after hearing you and looking at that book, and I think I just read the first, the intro and the par the first chapter. And I was like, Oh, no wonder I've been down this. So at the beginning of the year, I was really down and I could not get myself out of it. And I was like, what there's, you know, it was just like, I couldn't really figure it out what it what it was, but I was just like, and then I read it and I realized, oh, <laughs> I'm in the gap in everything, right? I'd lost a ton of weight and I was, you know, I'd like, I live, I've lost 50 pounds and it's like, oh, my arms are flabby. My thing, you know, like I was focused on like, and but I don't, you know, I don't have the six pack yet. You know, it's like, I'll, I'll, that's what I was focused on instead of like, Wait the you know <laughs> yeah look at what I've done you know so and I I realized I was like oh I'm in the gap and I was in the gap about almost everything in my life yeah I was like no wonder I'm down and then I just like switching to to the game to looking at yeah if I look at all of where I am when I, you know compared to where I started yeah. Um, and, and that's and that's so powerful. And thank you for sharing that example. That's amazing. And it, it, yeah, as soon as you you perfect, as you get close to it, you're like, that wasn't really it. Yeah. Now, no, it's like I thought at this weight I'd be good, but actually maybe I need to lose a little bit more, and it's still flabby, and I need to work out, and I need to tone. It. You know, it's like all the things. Still not good like, enough. So silly. Yeah. And the cost of that to your energy, your confidence, your creativity. Just think, like if you're not feeling confident. Are you going to go out and talk to someone who you have never, the type of person you've never talked to before? Are you going to ask for more money than you've never asked for? No, you're not. So really, you know, Dan Sullivan has this great expression, again, co-founder of Coach. Uh, he goes, you need to protect your, your confidence level the same way that you would your bank account. It's that important. So connected. it's strategic. It's not, an, it's not a nice to do. It's a need to do. And entrepreneurs especially, which... <laughs> Real estate investors are entrepreneurs, and that's who with whom we work. You know, we're we're always doing risky things. We're always doing hard and scary things that we've never done before. 
if you're not if you're not supporting your confidence who is yeah we, yeah we have to be able to fuel ourselves that way and it makes such a difference um now and, and i was just coaching someone today actually with the first time I i've talked to him three times in two weeks the first time i talked to him he was so down the dumps he was totally in the gap he's just sold the biggest part of his business He's now got freedom of time, of money, of relationship and purpose. And he was considering himself that he'd gone back to the beginning. I'm like, Michael, no, you look at, <laughs> look at the increased freedom. You're starting from a new place. When I talked to him today, he was lit up. He was on, he's had momentum. He had progress. He was like, this is amazing. Thank you so much. All I did was help him get out of the gap. Yeah. That's everything. Yeah. Ah, so good. Um, we're at the, time I was like a famed end of show trinity which is a brag of gratitude and desire but before we get into that what is the best way for people to connect with you and find out more about what you do oh my gosh uh if you're an entrepreneur strategiccoach.com is a brilliant place to check out all the strategic resources we have there's a ridiculous amount available for free <laughs> just saying we also have a really great uh knowledge product store and when we tell a knowledge product it's because our books include audios and videos and extra downloads and all the things. Um, so go check that out if you kind of just want to see what Coach is up to. Um, if you're interested in entrepreneurial teams, that's my particular jam. I have a few, uh, but your team success is mine, and I also have a team success web or team success podcast. Dan Sullivan and I do a podcast called Inside Strategic Coach, which is really fun. He's a, he's one of the world's best. I would say general philosophers, but certainly with regard to entrepreneurship, phenomenal, phenomenal thinker. Crawling inside his brain is the coolest thing of life. Um, so if you're interested in, in great conversations, I would do that. Yeah, those are two. And if you're interested in The Gap in the Gain and our other big book called Who Not How are available from Amazon or any of your favorite booksellers. So that's where to find that. Awesome. All right, fantastic. So now it's time for our Trinity. Um, that we start with a brag. Which so, what are you celebrating now? What's your what's your brag? Uh, what I am celebrate is a a big shift. Hmm, what's the best way to put this? Um, I helped someone make a decision that they were really struggling with, and it actually came from the book Unbound that you recommended to me, which changed my life. Um, and so I'm just really. I'm really grateful. Well, I'm, I'm proud of having been able to have that super tough conversation and get something forwarded that was stuck. Um, and that's a big deal. Knowing how to do that well with grace, with love, with care, and still get the result, phenomenal. So I'm very grateful for that. Well bragged. And what is one thing you're grateful for? Oh, what am I grateful for? Um, I'm grateful for um, Deirdre, my speaking coach. Uh, and I'm grateful to Crazy Good Talks because I did a two hour presentation this week to people who signed up for coach but haven't yet started. And it was the best one I've done. And I know what I did differently was because of what I've learned from her. Mm -hmm. And so just having that confidence and clarity and being on time, like to the minute for the break and for the end, and still creating this incredible sense of community that I'm so passionate about was amazing. So I'm really grateful for the learning because then I can translate that into a better experience for, for my tribe, for people I care about. Beautiful, thank you. And last but not least, what's one desire? Oh my gosh, uh, keep, keep, keep using my powers for good. <laughs> <laughs> Which is one of the things I like to, you know, I always coach people when they do know themselves and they use profiles like Colby or Clifton Strengths or something to use your powers for good. And I have a new leadership opportunity that I'm really excited about. And it's going to be a whole new level of learning for me. It's a subject I'm not, I'm passionate about, but I don't know everything. I'm sure I know a lot, to be perfectly honest. So I'm on a steep learning curve as of two days ago. Um, and that's kind of exciting slash terrifying. And I want to do a really, really good job, both from a results standpoint and from the people standpoint. It's all about knowing more about marketing. So I am, I'm excited slash slightly terrified, um, to take on that new adventure, but I'm, I'm, I'm pretty pumped. So that's my desire is to do a really, really, really good job for everyone and everything that that impacts. Hmm. So shall your desire be, or so much better than you can imagine. Say, say that again. So shall your desire be or so much better than you can imagine. Thank you. I love You're that. Welcome. <laughs> <laughs> Taking that right in. Yes. All right. Well, thank you. This was so fun. 
Um, it was an absolute pleasure. And um, y'all, you can connect with Shannon and find out all those resources at strategiccoach.com, your team success dot com inside strategic coach team success podcast there's so many places to go get more information and learning and growth and gains so um it was a pleasure and definitely come back subscribe and join us for another real estate investor goddesses podcast interview bye-bye bye-bye thank you so much